to Tennessee's at-home learning series for literacy. Today's lesson is for all fourth graders out there, so all children are welcome to tune in. This is the fifth in our lesson series. My name is Valencia Smith, and I'm a fourth grade teacher at Venus Stewart Elementary in Gallatin, Tennessee. I'm excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. If you didn't see our previous lessons, you can find them at www.tn.gov backslash education. You can still tune in into today's lesson if you haven't seen any of the others, but it might be more fun if you first go back and watch our other lessons since we'll be talking about things we've learned previously. Today, we will apply what we've learned in the Echo in Green, written by William Blake, by creating our poem using his poem as a model. Before we get started, to participate fully in our lesson today, you will need two pieces of paper, a pencil, and a surface to write on. Also, the student packet for ELA Grade 4 Lesson 15 can be found at www.tn.gov backslash education. During Lessons 1 through 4 in this series, we have talked very in depth about the poem, The Echo in Green. I like for us to always start with a little review so we can remember what we learned in our lessons together. Are you ready for your daily pop quiz? You know it's not really a pop quiz, but it is good for you to see what you can remember. Ready? Let's go. The poem was written post or after what war? Yes, it was written post or after the Revolutionary War. Here's a trickier one. Use the date from the poem that the poem was written and subtract six to determine the date the war ended. If you said 1783, you are correct. The poem was written in 1789, minus six equals 1783. Who is the author of the poem? I bet you remember that one, William Blake, because we've said it many times. Why is it interesting that William Blake is from England? Since we have talked about it several times, I'm sure you remember that England was the country the American colonists were fighting against in the Revolutionary War. Don't forget, check out some of Blake's poems, other poems on the internet or in your local library. Like I said, this is the last of five lessons on William Blake's poem. By focusing on the poem for several lessons, we were able to think about the poem in many different ways in each lesson. Look at all these charts of notes we've taken. Let's do a quick run through of the things that we've learned about. In lesson one, we considered the characters and setting of the poem. We realized the sun was rising and setting, the children were playing, and the old folks were watching the events of the echoing green. In lesson two, we focus on the structural elements of William, that William Blake used. As we create our poem together today, we will use these elements as part of our own poem. We noticed that William Blake's poem had three stanzas or divisions. He used this to show the reader how the day was progressing. Repetition, with, without looking, how many repeating details can you name? Go. What did you name? How many did you name? Let's see. He repeated the sun, birds, and greens, and children playing. Next is rhythm. What is a big determination of the rhythm of this poem? Yes, it was the syllables. The first two stanzas, stanzas had less syllables, which caused us to read it faster than the last stanza, which had more syllables. And finally, what simile did Blake use? Yes, he used like birds in their nest. During lesson three, we focused on the imagery that Blake used. What words did he use to describe the birds? He used merry and cheerful to help us imagine how the birds sounded. And finally, in lesson four, we learned about the theme. Do you remember the theme? Yes, it was cycles are part of life. As we finish the lesson, I ask you to finish the paragraph 
explaining how Blake developed the theme. To help you remember what we discussed about the theme, I completed my own paragraph. Think about how my paragraph is similar or different to what you wrote. In the echoing green, William Blake's theme is cycles are a part of life. Blake used many examples to support his theme. One group of examples that Blake used was cycles of a day. He started the poem by describing the sun rising and ended with the sun setting. In stanzas one and two, Blake described life during the day on the green by describing the actions of the birds and children and by calling the green an echoing green. He then showed the difference in the green in the evening during stanza three. He used words like weary to describe the children and darkening to describe the green. Another example of cycles in the poem is how Blake used the word echoing. He used the word, which means repeat, to show how the sounds and actions on the green were repeated each day. A final way that Blake demonstrated the theme is through the similar experiences of the old folk and the children. Both times spent playing on the field. Both spent time playing on the field. The theme of cycles are a part of life is developed by William Blake through his use of detail about cycles. Each day I end thinking, I really wish I could read what you write. I'm curious how you continue to think about the poem even when our lesson is over. One thing we haven't talked about is about checking for capitalization and punctuation when you're finished. When I finish writing, I go back and ask myself, did I capitalize the correct words? In the writing you have done this week, did you remember to capitalize William Blake's name and the title of the poem, The Echo in Green? I did but I found myself sometimes forgetting to capitalize green like he does in the poem. He uses it as a proper noun. Did you have time to draw an illustration of the theme for this last lesson? Cycles are a part of life. The themes made me start thinking of other cycles that could be included that were not in Blake's poem. The moon and moon phases would be interesting connect, connection to the theme. Also, have you studied the rain cycle? It is a cycle that is part of our lives. I am truly blown away by how much we have learned together. I started these lessons not knowing much about this poem. And through working with you as a poetry detective, I have learned so much and have enjoyed it. And I hope you have too. Today, we're going to use all that we've learned through this poem and apply it to create our own. Then, there will be time for you to brainstorm your own poem with my support. Finally, you will be ready to finish the poem we started on our own and write a new one. This is the same structure we have followed for all of our lessons together. Like we have done in all our lessons, we will use our time together to capture notes that will help you write independently. Go ahead and write brainstorming at the top of one sheet of paper and copy this chart. We will talk through each element we've learned through Blake's poem and apply it on our own. Don't forget to take notes as we read. I'm kind of sad that this is the last time we can read this poem together. We have learned so much about it. Are you able to say it from memory yet? I find myself remembering certain lines, but I don't have the, same, the whole thing memorized yet. If you have memorized it, you should have an adult post a video of you saying it along with any illustrations you have made. Be sure to include the hashtag PBSTeachTN. Today, as we read through the poem, just enjoy it. Let your mind work its magic as you listen to the words, read the words, or say the words with me. I will show you each stanza as I go. The Echoing Green by William Blake. The sun does arise and make happy the skies, and merry bells ring to welcome the spring. The skylark and thrush, the birds of the bush, sing louder around to the bell's cheerful sound, while our sports shall be seen on the echoing green. Old John with white hair does laugh away care, sitting under the oak among the old folk. They laugh at our play, and soon they all say, such, such were the joys when we all girls and boys 
in our youth time were seen on the echoing green. To the little ones weary, no more can be merry. The sun does descend and our sports have an end. Round the laps of their mothers, many sisters and brothers, like birds in their nest, are ready to rest. And, no, and sport no more seen on the darkening green. Now, let's get creative. We're going to take what we have learned and create. As always, be sure you are taking your own notes on your paper as I take notes on my chart. I want to talk through how you can use this chart. We will work together in this co-column, I mean co-create column to brainstorm right now. Then we will come back to the my own column later. We first need a topic. I have thought hard about this. We need a topic we all have in common. I also wanted one that was similar to Blake's Echoing Green, but different enough that we would have some different details to write about. I decided on the school's playground. I hope you're satisfied with that topic. You can choose your own later. I'm going to add school playground to our chart. Under topics, we're gonna to write school playground. Now, as we walk through our chart and through creating the poem, I will pause a little bit longer today so you can create. Now, let's move to stanzas. Do you remember what stanzas are? Yes, they are how the poem is divided into parts. To make it easier to use Blake's as an example, let's stick with three. I'm going to write one, two, and three in my box, box vertically, so I can brainstorm what might be happening in each stanza. So let's write. One, two, and three. Blake's poem, Blake used his poem to show what happened across a day. I think it would be neat to do the same for the school playground, but I think it would look a little different from the green. Stanza one, visualize your school's playground in the morning. What do you see in your head? When I think of the playground in the morning, I see it quiet and lonely because no kids are on it. So for number one, let's write quiet and lonely. Now, stanza two, what happens on the playground as the day progresses? What do you see in your head? I see the playground filled with kids playing. It's a happy sound. By number two, let's write kids playing and happy. Now, finally, for stanza three, what happens to the playground in the evening? Interestingly, I see it is lonely and quiet again because all the students have gone home. They actually might make an interesting title for the playground because when you think about it, the majority of the day, it is lonely until the children go out to recess. So for stanza three, let's write, write quiet and lonely again. Are you filling out your chart with me? Good. Now, let's move on to repetition. It's the next element that we need to brainstorm. We need to think about what could repeat in our poem. What are you thinking? Jot down some ideas in the chart in the re repetition box. When I think of the playground in the morning and evening, I think we could somehow repeat the silence limbs, limp swings, and abandoned slides. What do you think about my words choices? My word choices. Limp means not stiff or firm, so we could be describing the chains about a boy or girl on the swing. 
abandoned means lacking someone. So no one is, is on the slide. In the repetition row for the chart, let's write standards one and three, silence, limp, swings, and abandoned slides. So for stanzas. One and three, we're gonna write silence, limp, swings, and abandoned slides. Now, I see how we could use this, these in stanzas one and three. How might the noise, swings, and slides be different in stanza two? Try to write some thoughts down in the chart. I imagine laughter and yelling instead of silence, taunt swings and busy slides. So let's write that for stanza three, I'm sorry, for stanza two, laughter, yelling, taunt swings and busy slides. Laughter, yelling, out swings and busy slides. I am liking this. We have some interesting imagery going on here too, because our word choices lets the reader know how the playground sounds. I'm going to draw an arrow from repetition to imagery, but we might think of some more imagery when we get there. So it's from here. Imagery. Could you determine the meaning of the word tout based on the on that is being used for the opposite of limp? Good, tout means tight. Next, we need to think of how we might use rhythm in the poem. Blake used more, remember Blake used more syllables when the day was busy and less as the evening moved in. What are your thoughts? To apply how Blake used rhythm, we will have to use more syllables in stanza one and three when, when the playground is lonely and quiet, so the reader will read it slower and add less syllables when the playground is active and lively with students. I will add that to, to the chart. So let's see, stanza one, let's write S1 and two, S1 and three, more syllables. And stanza two, S2, less syllables. Now, let's chat about where we could add a simile. Blake used his simile in the third stanza. He compared the children going home to birds in the nest. Hmm. I wonder what the playground looks like during the day when the children are playing. We might, what might we compare? I will give you a, a second to think about that. I thought of one, did you? I think the children will look like a swarm of bees moving around the playground equipment. Let's add that to our chart. Children look like swarm of bees moving around the playground equipment. That's a lot. Children. look like a swarm of bees moving around the play equipment. Now we've already added some imagery in our repetition box. Are there other details we would could add? The playground I'm imagining has a balancing beam. I think wobbly feet on the balance beam makes for an interesting imagery. So in the simile row, 
in the imagery row, I'm sorry, let's write wobbly feet on the balance beam. Now, lastly, is our theme. Because we were sticking with what happens to the playground throughout the day, I think we could use Blake's theme. Cycles are a part of the day. The classes of children cycle through the playground each day at different times, too. So I'm going to add that to stanza two. We might use it in the point. So here's our theme. Cycles are a part of life. Now, let's move on to our guided practice. Let's brainstorm to work through how to create the poem. First, I think we decided on the title. And it is The Lonely Playground. For stanza one, we've had several details we wanted to include. More syllables, quiet place, limp chains, lonely slides. We need to start the day in the morning. I thought of a line we could use. Another school day begins. It has seven syllables, which follows Blake's pattern. Starts our cycle of the day and starts with the theme of the cycles are a part of life. I'm going to aim to have all the lines in the stanza to have six to eight syllables. Hmm. Now, I need something about the children arriving to school. At the ends of the lines should, at the ends of the lines should rhyme or be close. What are you thinking? Are your ideas allowed? You can use your own, or I thought of, another school day begins. Kids return from where they've been. Be sure you're writing your own lines down or my lines. I will give you time now to tell you your to tell to get your ideas down on your paper. Now, can we work in the lonely work on the lonely slide here? A good action word that rhymes with slide is glide. Glide means to move smoothly. See, if you can think of two lines that use these words, glide and slide. I was imagining the kids entering the school building in the morning. Into the school door, they slide, leaving the one lonely slide. I like our imagery here of the lonely slide on the playground. Now let's do a syllable check. Count how many. Leaving, leaving the lo one lonely slide seven syllables in each. That works. Maybe we could describe the slides more some here. We talked about how the words descend a lot in Blake's poem. It means to go down and kids go down the slide. Let's see if we can use descend and end in our next two lines. Perhaps, some, perhaps something happening at the end of the slide. Say your ideas out loud. Here's mine, but yours is probably better. Waiting for joy to descend into the sand pit at the end. The slide is waiting for the children to descend the slide with joy. What are your ideas? We brainstormed that we needed to work in the limp, in the limp swing chain in the silence of the playground. I will give you a minute to brainstorm your thoughts out loud. If you need a kickstart, try using the words wait and gate. I wrote, limp swing, chains patiently wait, silence envelopes the gate. 
we have quite a bit of personification in this poem. We talked about personification in an earlier lesson. It means giving lifelike qualities to something that is not human. Do you see how I use personification in these lines? Swings don't really wait and silence can't do the action of enveloping or surrounding. Let's do a quick syllable check. How many? That's right. Again, both have seven. Check. Now, Blake used 10 lines is hit in his first stanza. Let's do the same. We need to end the stanza with the title, so that would be something like On the Lonely Playground. This means our line before it needs to rhyme with ground. In my head, I often go through the alphabet and jot down all the words I can think of that rhyme and see if I can make something work. Abound, bound, down, found, hound, mound, pound, round, renowned, sound, and wound. I like the word abound, which means to exist in large numbers. The playground wants. Check out the personification. The playground wants large amounts of children. Here's what I wrote. Seeing children to abound on the lonely playground. Let's read the whole first stanza. What you wrote may be different or you may have used my words. Either way is fine. Another school year begins. Kids return from where they've been. In the school door they glide, leaving the one lonely slide, waiting for joy to descend into the sandpit at the end. Limp swing chains patiently wait, silence envel envelops the gate, seeing children to abound on the lonely playground. We're moving along here. Let's move to stanza two and see what we wanted to include in this stanza. So let's look back at our chart. In this stanza, we wanted to include all the students coming to play, yelling, top swings, busy slides, wobbly feet on the balance beam, and a comparison of a swarm to a swarm of bees. We said we would have shorter lines like Blake did. Let's aim for five or six syllables per line so the rhythm will be faster. <clears throat> Here we go. We still have the title of the Lonely Playground. Why don't we start with the comparison? Bees on a honey hive or a swarm of bees? Think for a minute. Here's how I started. Like bees to a hive. Check me, how many syllables? Yes, five. Now, where is that rhyme with hive? Dive, five, jive. Let's try dive. What can you write about? We're talking about the kids going to the slide like bees to a hive. I wrote, to the slide, kids dive. Five syllables. Let's see if we can give some more reference to the, to the time of day. Usually, you get to play on the playground at midday or noon. Here's my line. At noon, they skip and jump six syllables. The line ends in jump. What are some words that rhyme with jump? Jot down a few on your paper. Let's go, the al go through the alphabet in your head if you need to. Bump, dump, gump, hump, lump, rump. What word did you use? If you can't choose, try bump. My, here's mine. Down slides Zach. Down slides Kim. Bump. Check my syllables or check your own line. Mine has four. I would like for you to include the tau chains and the wobbly feet now. I will give you a minute to think about two lines you might use. Talking out loud helps you to think it through. If you need something to help you get started, I rhyme tout and hot. 
Are you ready for mine? On the swing, chains are taut. Chains are taut. Wobbly feet. Beans are hot. I have six and seven syllables. Check yours if you're if you wrote different. Now, because I think laughter on a playground, I want to include that next. Is there something you can think of? I would like for you to write about the laughter or choose something else for the next two lines. I chose these two. Sweet sounds of laughter for here ever after. My syllables are six and seven. Check yours again. We want to continue the faster rhythm. Wow, we are ready to write the last two lines of the poem. Before we write, we need to choose a word besides lonely to describe the playground. How would you describe the playground? Jot down some ideas on your paper. I chose the word happy because it is emotion like lonely, but I think the playground would be happy when all the kids are playing. After you decide on the last line of your stanza, go back and create a line before it. Here's the end of stanza two. Enjoying the sound on the happy playground. Stanza two is finished. Let's read it all together. Like bees to a hive, to the slide kids dive. And at noon, skip and jump, down slides Zach bump. On the swing, change a tight, tout. Wobbly feet on beans are hot. Sweet sounds of laughter for here ever after. Enjoying the sound on the happy playground. Let's do a mental check to see if we have all the elements like Blake. Repetition, slide, swings, and the sound. Short lines and few syllables. Yes. Simile. Yes. The kids going to the slide are like bees going to a hot. Imagery. Yes. Tout chains, wobbly feet, and sweet sounds. Theme. Did we stick to the theme of the cycles are part of life? Yes, we wrote about the playground changes, how the playground changes during midday. We also signaled it was noon. We don't have time to co-create stanza three, but guess what? That is your job. Using the chart, I want you to think about how are you going to show time moving to the evening when the playground is lonely again? How are you going to give details about the sound of the playground? What will you choose to repeat? Will you add more imagery to your poem? How will you add more syllables to your lines? I'm going to read you how mine ended. Then you can get creative and make your own stanza three. The shrill bell sounds at three. How oddly lonesome to be. Well, children, where children once played, now the still quiet is laid. Swings put to rest in the shade. In the west, the sun slowing sets. No visitor this place gets. Awaiting the next day's rising gold mound above the lonely playground. Here's our independent task for today. Be sure to write it down. I will read it to you. Write your own stanza three to our poem, The Lonely Playground. Use William Blake's poem as a model for your stanza. Be sure to include repetition from stanzas one and two. Show how time is moving to evening. Give details about the sounds of the playground. Use more imagery. Connect to the theme of a cycles, that cycles are a part of life and check your lines for six to eight syllables. When you are finished with your poem, have an adult record you reading it and post it to social media using the hashtag PBS Teach Tennessee. Your creative assignment for today is to use your own poem about another topic in the style of William Blake. Remember, on the chart, we left a column blank for you to brainstorm your own poem. Post it too. Boys and girls, I've enjoyed reading the Echoing Green over the last several lessons and creating a poem with you today. 
thank you for inviting me into your home and I look forward to seeing you in our next lessons in Tennessee's at home learning series. We will start a new text in the next lesson. Bye-bye.